That bell starts what should be a savagely fought battle. May not be a pretty battle, but it is bound to be a tough one. <clears throat> the man who is backed up against the turnbuckle is Dick Slater. The man who just retaliated with that wallop across the jaw is Dick Slater, and he hit Bruiser Bob Sweetan. There is no love lost between these men. Dick Slater is in there to try to avenge a pile driver given to his friend Scott Casey by Bob Sweetan. Some of you have seen that incident here on our program. But it is not to Sweet Dan's credit that he almost put Scott Casey out of wrestling permanently. There is still some question about how Scott Casey's neck is going to hold up under the strain of a real solid match because he is just starting now in a course of therapy that include weightlifting with weights attached to his neck and many other things that are going to tell the story. But Dick Slater wants to get the even with him and Dick Slater could have done it right there. It was close to being a pinfall. There's one as Slater followed up on his side headlock, moved in there quickly to capture Sweet Tan. Now Sweet Tan next Friday night is going to be in really serious trouble. He faces the Junkyard Dog, one of the most colorful characters in wrestling, most certainly, but one of the most difficult men to wrestle, a proven athlete, a man who stays in tremendous shape, and don't let the term Junkyard Dog fool you. It just means that when you rile him, he can get as mean as any junkyard dog. So it's a side headlock, the broad back of Dick Slater as he applies it, and the equally broad back of Bob Sweetan. Swooping slam, and as they move in, no credit to either man, they missed that guillotine drop. Listen to these fans now as they Raw for Dick Slater as he takes charge in this battle, and the um, side headlock is his weapon again. Sweet Tan caught. He's prone, but he. This is not a defenseless position. Now you see him as he gets up to his knees. This in wrestling is considered either a defensive or an offensive move to be on your knees. <clears throat> the crowding into the buckle and Slater is not giving in an inch. One blow is bringing Sweet Tan a half dozen. Oh, he come in there to land on him quickly and solidly. And again, Slater loves to follow up on something with which he has had success. And in this case, it is the side headlock. He moves in there to take it and to put the squeeze on. And he knows that the bees he has started buzzing in the bonnet of Bob Sweetan are being aroused again. Punishment that is dealt on punishment is multiplied. Dick Slater's advantage. Referee Eric Mannheimer watching closely. Oh, you can see what he's doing. He is straightening out his body and then dropping down so that the effect of hitting the canvas comes right through him all the way into Bruiser Bob Sweetan. Arm bar as he tries to turn Sweetan over. He's got a front headlock and an arm bar and he moves in on top. He's got his weight in a good position. He's not able to cope with the obvious uh, power in those big shoulders of uh, 
Bob Sweet. And, and there goes Dick Slater at the five minute mark as he drives in there head first. And again, oh, this is one of Slater's favorite moves. I don't envy him that move. I would hate to be doing it too often. But he is about to cut the head off of Bruiser Bob Sweetan if he gets another chop in that same place. And listen to these fans roaring their approval. But regardless of how Sweetan makes out here tonight, he will face the junkyard dog here next week. That match has been signed and sealed. It will be delivered as part of the great, great all-action package here in the Coliseum next Friday night. Stars like Chavo Guerrero, El Canec, Mexico's number one mask star in this country today, and Tito Santana, the young man who won the $25,000 prize money. He, he is a great, great star in his own right and has been going great guns up through the Midwest and is coming in here now for part of the spring season. We look forward to Tito next Friday night. Oh, Dick Slater didn't look forward to that. He was caught and caught solidly. The atomic drop and Dick Slater was dropped on that knee of Bob Sweetan. Side headlock, there he tries to lift him, he does lift him, he drops him back in the back body drop, landed him on the back of his neck, but Slater has not yet recovered from his problem. He's looking to lay it into Sweetan. That hard landing on that, um, on that back body drop is something that you can not Imagine until it has happened to you. Front headlock for durable Dick Slater. The sweet tan underneath, trying to cover up, <clears throat> trying to move in there, move away, but he can't, can't make it. There again, Slater uses that move of uh, sort of using his body as a lever. He straightens it out when he throws it up into the air and when he hits the canvas, his muscles are taut, and it passes the action along. And Slater put a stop to that effort, and oh, man, wouldn't that jar you? It jarred Bob Sweetan, I'll tell you. Slater's on top. He couldn't stay there. And the front headlock is, again, Slater's... Slater's grip, he knows he's wearing Sweetan down with it. He's pouring it to him and making it difficult for Sweetan to not only come out, but it's making it difficult to get out. Front headlock, and that front headlock, just that, oh, he smashed into the turnbuckle. Dick Slater that time smashed face first into the turnbuckle and he just caught a questionable blow. And here is Bob Sweetan seeing an opening and following up on it. He has not made a move for the pile driver that has made him the marked man in Southwest wrestling these days, just as he has been wherever he has, has appeared. And Dick Slater is caught he is now about to face the moment of truth as Sweetan moves in to drive his fists and his feet into a man who was unable to retaliate. Now Slater's out of the rope and he's out of the ring. He is on the floor right here alongside of us as uh, Bruiser Bob Sweetan follows him up and looks for a ring post and smashes him in there, shoulder first. And Bruiser Bob Sweetan, ooh, a smash, a solid driving smash with that chair across his back. And the, um, on the floor, Slater, 
Referee Eric Mannheimer doing the counting. And Mannheimer trying to keep uh, Sweet Tan away, but now Sweet Tan comes out, he goes, oh! He raised that chair just once too often. And Slater comes in on the head, and he come in there that time to blast him with a chair. And not only blast him with a chair, but to literally chop his head off that time. And the action on the floor as the fans, oh, and again, Dick Slater hit with that arm in, and shoulder into the ring post. Slater now being directed toward the ring by the fans and that arm of his being held. He has hit both of his arms in, in, into that uh, ring post and Sweet Tan, who likes to hurt people, who brags about hurting people, now takes hold of Dick Slater and pours it to him. Trouble for Slater. Arm bar is the hold. Sweet Tan knows how to use it. The fans are screaming. Yes, the fans say, give him one, give him one. And Slater comes over with a driving, driving wallop. And Mannheimer is trying to find out what happened, but he didn't see it. And he hesitates to break it because he didn't see it. And Slater underneath is in trouble. The, there goes that foot stomping away at the arm of Dick Slater and Sweet Ann holds and holds tight. Mannheimer watching for that shoulder to go down. Slater making sure that it doesn't go down. The pressure being put on that arm. He's got it scissored. He's pulling up underneath. He is jerking at that arm. He's got his weight holding it solidly in one, one place. And as the pull is, is put on there, there's Sweet Tan again with an effective knee drop right into the deltoid muscle. Well, Sweet Tan using that ring post again. He's got his arm litter. Oh, oh. Sweet Tan likes to hurt people. He has warned everybody that he enjoys it. Right now, he must be having his enjoys for sure. But Slater is fighting back. Here's a give and a take. And a one-armed Dick Slater flailing away at him and finding his mark. And listen to the uproar, the wild uproar of these fans. It, fans are screaming for Dick Slater and Slater went running into him that time with his head and he's trying to fight to keep his feet Sweet Tan down Slater coming in again he's, he was going for the atomic drop didn't make it and neither did Sweet Tan and whoops referee Eric Mannheimer didn't make it either He's down. Here goes the pile driver. They're trying, and he back body dropped him. He put a stop to it. He didn't get the pile driver. The fans here literally go stark crazy as they scream. And up on the rope, Dick Slater comes barreling off that to drive into Bob Sweet and listen to this noise, this tremendous, tremendous noise here in the. And, well, there came Hacksaw Duggan, and this time it's Slater who used the pile driver on Hacksaw Duggan, and here comes Gino Hernandez coming in there to, he's getting hold of Dick Slater, and between them they are wailing away at Dick Slater. The pile driver on Dick Slater, and Slater goes down on on top of his head, the pair of them. Here is Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich is in, and it's Rich is after, not only after G Gino Hernandez, he is after anybody who is going after Dick Slater. These are uh, friends from Georgia, friends from 
other wild, wild action. And the Tommy Rich stands guard over Dick Slater. And the Gino Hernandez on the outside of that ring. And Hacksaw Duggan and Sweetan move out of the ring. We'll be back in a moment. Our good friends at Mobile America want to show you how to save money. With me tonight is Tommy Rich, a man many of you people have seen on cable television many times, but not as many times as here. But Tom, there are a lot of people out there who are going to be rooting for you to beat Nick Bockwinkel here tonight for the AWA title. Yes, you know, Mr. Boss, before I talk about Nick Bockwinkel, I'd just like to thank you for bringing me to Houston, Texas, and thank all these great people you got here. And I'd like to say, you know, Dickie Slater's a very good friend of mine, and there's a lot of things going on in this sweet tan and this gorgeous Gino he calls himself. Well, you came to Dick's rescue tonight, for sure. Yes, sir. Well, that's a Dickie would have done the same for me, and anytime, you know, we watch each other's back. Anytime, anywhere, any place we're together, we're like that. We're very good friends. You know, a lot of these guys get in this business, like Gino, for the money part, you know. You know, like it goes further that with Dickie and myself, and I'd also just like to say that you know you're giving me an opportunity. I've held the you know NWA World Title, and now I've got a chance tonight to uh, hold both titles. And I'd just like to thank you very much. On behalf of all these people, we want to welcome you and hope you'll be back again as a champion. Thank you very much. I hope so too. Tommy Rich, and you can tell that Tommy here is as popular in Houston as he is any place that he wrestles, and he wrestles every place. We, speaking of popularity, we can't always say that about the AWA World's Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Nick Bockwinkel. You know, by the time the people get to hear my voice, is it tomorrow night? Mm -hmm. By that time, you'll know the results of what took place between Mr. Rich and myself. And there, of course, will be no doubt in my mind that uh, if this interview were taking place live tomorrow night, mm -hmm. that it would be still the same way. I would be standing here holding the position supreme as the world's heavyweight champion, the most superb consummate athlete in the entire world. And uh, if you'd like to add to that, you may, Mr. Bosch. Add to that? It would be hard, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it would be, if, it would be even if it was true, it would be hard. Difficult even for someone as eloquent as yourself. Mm -hmm. But you gotta understand something, you see. Mr. Rich is one of those poor, supreme humanoids, like the, a lot of eight to five humanoid lifers, the, uh, white Sockers that uh, hold him up in their esteem and they cheer him on but he has he suffers from this thing called the roar of the crowd now if there's 10,000 of you you could start to cheer for him and you could march that poor dumb soul right off the end of a cliff and if 10,000 of you cheered me or booed me I could care less you might jump off the cliff thank you no, very much really mm -hmm. Mr. Nick Bockwinkel, world's heavyweight champion, <clears throat> recognized by the AWA, and the AWA covers a vast, vast, vast amount of territory.